and let's open up first with data and then from the data we're going to go carry over to a few of the studies that came out of the past week which have profound effect in reference to pandemic mitigation and general health and obviously in correlation with COVID. So let us begin. First off, Sweden has been the bane of a lot of politicians for quite some time, especially strong lockdown advocates. But all of a sudden you haven't heard about Sweden any longer. So let's look at the data from the other side. The data we're utilizing is from Our World in Data, which is maintained through Oxford University and is a primary data source used by most institutions. So let us begin. Data from the other side. Data you don't see in the daily news. All right, new deaths for Sweden. Now this is obviously, for those not familiar, this is, we're going to the daily basis here to October 16th. And we'll run the code again a little bit, see what updates to October 17th. Here is Sweden. That is one death on October 16th, compared to the US, 828, 970, 817, 314. Now keep in mind, going all the way up and down the line, there's 1,014 to one on October 10th. This is Sweden. Now this does not represent deaths per million, We'll review that up here, but to look at this graphically and to give you an idea, this is probably why it kind of failed or dropped out of the news. This is Sweden here right here on the blue line. And this obviously is United States uh, moving on the orange line. Sadly, but that's the way it happened. Now that's the aspect. In order to run a proper study in reference to lockdowns, mask use, social isolation, so on and so forth, you need to have controls. What you notice often in the media is we don't use controls as far as other countries are concerned. We only reflect upon internally what happens inside our country and not seeing if it's working or what is working or what is not working in other countries. But let us proceed to the studies as follows, as promised. Our right, first one to look at is this one here. All right, catalase, a very common enzyme found quite, I mean, quite a few areas in food preparation you could buy it on supplement shelves so on and so forth catalase this last week I think was doo -doo, September 29th all right was shown to be very effective for protecting the lungs from oxidation and of course here too it also was found to repress the replication of SARS-CoV-2 at least in animals without notable noticeable toxicity that is a nice breakthrough that came out just recently to proceed to the next article. All right, lower zinc levels, for example, and I'll expand that here for a second, I'll line it up here. Lower zinc levels were found uh, to result in increased fatalities in COVID-19 patients. And that data came out, or I should say that research was September 22nd, 2020. And again, the links will be there for you to follow on your own to the general public studies. And I'll put that on the YouTube site. Right here, lower zinc levels at admission correlate with higher inflammation in the course of infection and poorer outcomes. Two, number one, number two, I should say. We're gonna to try to do this without pausing. We're just gonna go straight through. Number three, real interesting article in reference to uh, iodine nasal antiseptic for rapid in inactivation of SARS-CoV-2. Now, here is the catch. I'm just gonna put the links, I'm not gonna put the titles of the articles on there because the titles often will say, inactivate, kill, eradicate. Those are words which YouTube and other multimedia aspect uh, empires, I should say, don't like to see. Uh, I should say empires, organizations. And that can get you censored. So I'm just gonna post the links. But right here, whoops, let's get that a little bigger there. All right. Complete inactivation of SARS-CoV-2 by concentrations, so far and so forth, uh, basically in vitro. Very promising. People ask about iodine antiseptics or nasal antiseptics, and that is the research as of September 17th. Another one, which is extremely promising. A lot of countries, for example, you notice we're using uh, basically 254 nanometer UVC light which you can't use around people because you actually end up hurting people, sunburn, skin irritation, so on and so forth. Well, the researchers here found that the 222 nanometers UV light, basically, and here's a title which I cannot post online, but I'll read it to you, effectively kills virus causing COVID-19. Now, look at this. Look how fast it operates. Now, think about this. If you had these UV lights in public arenas, for example, restaurants, bus stations, so on and so forth, 
there would be no safe haven for COVID, especially since last time we found out that the uh, droplets, obviously, or aerosol, tend to congregate on the floor, and the major transmission route of COVID is actually the shoes, because where do the droplets basically end up floating down to? The ground. Where do you have a 100% positive rate in reference to COVID-19? The floor. So, if you did something like this, if they would, any of the uh, politicians or thought leaders, we'll just call them, actually paid attention to the research, we could have really helped out a lot with the pandemic mitigation a long time ago. Look how fast. Killed after 30 seconds exposure to 222 nanometer UVC radiation. And on top of that, the beautiful part, the wavelength of 222 cannot penetrate the outer non-living cell that you buy and skin it won't cause harm to living cells beneath. To make it safer but equally potently effective, da da da, so on and so forth. And the cool aspect of this too is these light bulbs in Japan are actually available. And I'm not going to do an ad for the obviously this the science, the research here. But you know what? Who cares? If it works and it saves lives, I mean, we're doing ads for vaccine companies. But if this works as well, then why not? So that's who does the uh, UVC lights. If they're available now, what a godsend. All right, now next. Now we're gonna go more to the data analytics. Data analytics. Now JAMA came out with a real interesting article in reference to excess death. Now this is not to be moaned in the United States, but again, in order to see if you're doing what you're doing is effective, you need to have controls to see if you're outperforming other countries in reference to pandemic mitigation. And here we go. You ready? This is it. So look at this. Now I want you to pay careful attention to this right here. All the countries basically passed about a million COVID cases at the exact same time. Look at the difference in variation between mortality. This is basically up to June 7th, 2020. Norway, moderate mortal, uh, mortality. Finland, Austria, Denmark, Germany, da da da. Look at this up to June 7th. Now, this article came out, was the date of this release was October 12th. And then here we go down to the United States. There is something extremely wrong with this picture. So much so, we're going to look at it in a second that basically if you are running, let's say a box plot for those in data analytics and those who know what an outlier is, the United States is a real outlier. And it may not have to do much with saying, oh, well, we didn't lock down early enough, we didn't wear enough masks, so on and so forth. A lot of countries, for example, didn't incorporate the same measures that we had and still succeeded. So you have to get past the emotional attachment to feel like you have to do something. Sometimes the cure can be worse than disease. I'm not saying in this case, because obviously it's all speculation, but our performance overall, as of June 7th, 2020, compared to other countries, that is an opinion for you to basically dwell upon. And even Sweden, for example, we just looked at, where we only saw one death, unfortunate death, is October 16th, just uh, yesterday as compared to the 800 and so on from the United States. And they did very little and they still are outperforming us. So what are we doing wrong if it's not the pandemic mitigation, lockdowns and so on and so forth. So let us proceed as follows. Now we're gonna go to data analytics. Again, these links will all be there for you to follow. Data analytics, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, we're gonna go to Scandinavian countries because first, that is what some very popular doctor decides to say, hey, we are not like them, so why should it make a difference? Well, it does make a difference because you need to look at all your information. Just don't ignore it because it's inconvenient. Let's restart the kernel, run the cell. So I want to see the information for the first time with you. And so we have all cells are running. There we go. And our data is coming up. All right, what we're looking at here first is total deaths per million, unfortunate. But there we are, up to, I think, October 16th. Now here's our plot. Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, United States. And this is from January, from the beginning of the pandemic, all the way continuing through. There they are, there's the United States. Again, it's not to be moaning the United States, it's basically for us to reflect on what we can do better. To proceed as follows. 
Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway. Now, this is real intriguing. Now, you see Iceland here? The transmission rate just skyrockets. But the mortality rate doesn't. Proceed as follows. All right, now here we go. We're looking at new cases smooth per million. See Iceland? Boom! And again, just dramatic increase. Now we're looking at new death smooth per billion. Now look here at Iceland. All right, now it looks like they may have had a death just recently. And I'm talking a death. Uh, compared to the base of the United States, so on and so forth. So an important of Seoul. Uh, and look at the other countries, for example. Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden, still United States. And again, this is because we're looking at our Scandinavian friends because a certain doctor on TV said, why should we look at the Scandinavians, basically. To proceed as follows. New cases, uh, smooth per million to new deaths smooth per million. The orange part is obviously the new deaths. Uh, and this is the total deaths past a certain period of time. I think it was October. And here we go. Oh, from, sorry, apologies. Sep September 1st, 2020. And here we go. Now, this is called massaging data. Now, this chart looks a lot worse because the way I had it set up. And you can see, here we go, still going. And there are our Scandinavian friends. Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, United States. And this is new death smooths per million, accumulated since September 1st. All right, now I think, what else do we have after this? Oh, this is the data, just for you to uh, basically look at. And then Iceland, zero deaths, zero deaths, zero deaths, zero deaths, zero deaths. And there we have Iceland, unfortunate per individual. 0.419. All right, now I'll go to the next data. Let's go to our basically our world data as we looked at prior. So let's just rerun this data again. Here we go. Restarted the kernel, running all the cells. Please be patient. Again, I want to run the data fresh and new so we all look, can look at it together. And here we go. Now, oh, here we are. We're posting our data now. This is the world data. New cases move per million to deaths move per million. Case load or transmission is not even correlating with the death rate. So the fact that the media keeps on promoting new cases smooth per million, yet it doesn't seem to have a correlation, is befuddling. To proceed as follows. All right, deaths smooth per million, new cases smooth per million. You can see that as far as what we're looking at here. Um, really low percentage. Looking at the data frame there, data frame, data frame, data frame. All right, new cases smooth per million, new deaths smooth per million. Again, we looked at something similar to that already. It's repeating, I apologize for that. And now here we look at this. Now this is a weird correlation. Look at Great Britain's lockdown. Now let's back this up just a little bit so it's easier to see. Whoops, and if that's not back, that's back, thank you. And here we are. Now, Great Britain is in blue. And every time they seem to go ballistic on the lockdowns, there's an interesting correlation between the increase in, uh, basically, we're looking at the, um, the cases, smooth per million. Obviously, the pink is the United States, which follows about the same pattern as Britain. Sweden, again, cases do not result in deaths, as we saw that with Iceland. And we have a little increase in Sweden, because Sweden has like very little pandemic mitigation. Singapore, the high population densities. Again, we ran, we ran the candle tower. We looked for correlations between population, geography, people, so on and so forth. It made no sense. The only thing that resulted in the higher death was basically due to higher hospitalizations. And we'll look at that in a second. And so there's our information as far as that. New deaths per million. All right, Great Britain during its lockdown. Boom. Uh, this is USA. This is a constant line, a tragic line. Sweden dropped off the edge there as far as reporting is concerned. And of course, our other countries look like right along the x-axis. What more can I say? All right, let's get this a little closer now. Let's see what we're looking at. Uh, new death smooth per million. This is as of October 4th. We looked at this chart it was a little earlier. I alluded to it. This is deaths per million, so which is more a fairer assumption because we're comparing apples to apples because different population base total and so forth, you know, you can end up with higher numbers just because of a greater population. But million deaths per million is a fairer, uh, fairer comparison. 
And here we are. There is Sweden, and there's the United States. Against Sweden, very little in reference to pandemic mitigation and lockdowns. The United States, we went all out, and they want to go even further. But the data, when you use other countries as controls, does not support it. But to proceed as follows, and I think we looked at this, total uh, basically look at this other countries as far as Taiwan, which I don't know how it escaped the entire thing. Again, said before, send all epidemiologists over there, find out what the heck they're doing. Korea, Japan, same thing. Singapore, United States, Great Britain. All right, there we are. Look at Singapore again. Now, this is really interesting. When you look at transmission to fatalities, transmission does not have to result in fatality. Again, you have to look at the information as a whole and here we are. This is cases per million. And look what we're looking at. So find the answer somewhere there. To proceed as follows, total dust per million. All right, we saw that. All right, that's, that's Singapore, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. And of course, we looked at other collateral damage, unfortunate, tragic collateral damage as a result of COVID lockdowns. All right, to proceed as follows, we're gonna to go to the COVID states. Because, why? Everyone seems to not like Florida. And to be fair, again, I, let's see how Florida turned out here. You start kernel, run all cells. I'm looking at the information from the exact same time that you are. So I'm not trying to have any pretense in reference to biasing it before you get a chance to see it. All right, that's your state data, data frames. Coming up, data frames, data frames, da da da. Data frames. Good. So those are familiar with basically pandas and python, you can see exactly how I extracted the data. Population here, of course, because we're gonna be breaking the population down for 100,000. Now look at this. Uh, it looks like a bunch of scribbly lines. California, blue, Florida, orange, uh, Georgia, green. I included that because Georgia also did very little uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, New York, which is basically there and South Dakota. This is as of October 22nd. And there's our means and our medians for those interested in the data analysis. Now look at South Dakota. Now here's the catch. When you're going to massage a graph or chart or data, something like this can look really, really dramatic. But as we get towards the bottom of, the, uh, of this particular slide here, you'll see it's not as dramatic as you think. All right, there's South Dakota. Looks like the world's coming to an end. This is positive increases per 100,000. So if you have like 100,000 people in your state and you have one, you know, whatever it is, it looks pretty dramatic. So here we are about 120. And there we are, and this is from October 22nd, so on and so forth, looks dramatic. High transmission, but again, look at Singapore, look at Iceland, use that as your correlation. All right, and here we are. Now we're looking at basically death increases per total. All right, we're gonna pass by that real fast because it's a, it's a cumulative and it's not a good representation. All right, and then we are going down the rows here. Now we're just looking at California, Florida, and New York. Uh, this is death increase per total again, not a fair representation, but you get the picture. Then New York is always gonna be a little higher, California is higher than Florida. Now looking at positive increases per 100,000. Remember, uh, Florida recently ended their lockdown but transmission rate does not necessarily have to imply fatality rate or hospitalization. There's California, blue, uh, New York, green, Florida. And then look at this bounce up and down. This is the death increases in Florida. This is really weird. This looks like more like a reporting issue than anything else, uh, but it's all across the board. But there's our means, our medium, because you're gonna have some sort of skewing here. So I wanted to include the median. And for those not familiar, Let's make it a little bigger, there we are. All right, now we're gonna be looking at a lot of repetitive information, basically going back a little further, further, further. This is for me personally, uh, more data. Now here we are. This is a, what do you call a box plot? This here to determine outliers. Now this is not representing a particular state. Can you guess what state that is? And a few other states here and there. You'll see in a second. Now these are what outliers are. 
So you're looking at a box plot. And this is not fair because we're looking at total deaths and it could have a, a skewing due to population density. But you can guess what these states these are and I have it all laid out so you can see. And this is your box plot, your, your quartile, interquartile, so on and so forth. And this is your bar chart, all right? New York, Texas. Now I believe this is the, yeah, this is the total deaths. California, New Jersey, Florida. And you can see all the way going down the line. Now remember when we looked at South Dakota? Here we go. Now again, if you want to bemoan South Dakota, you could see how you could do it graphically by massaging the data, by making it look uh, more alarming than it actually is. As we're going down, down, you know, down, 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 Oregon, Utah, Idaho, here we are, South Dakota. So South Dakota, it compared to New York and total deaths. So when you look at that chart again, and you're looking at what we have, you know, as far as basically up here, why is it purple? You can see how that looks very dramatic. And you come down here, and even though each life is precious, not to be mowing that, but it would not necessarily make a front page story. All right, now, COVID data focus. I want to run the graph here. Now, what I'm interested in looking at here is hospitalizations to death rate, because that still is one of the most intriguing aspects of anything is because that dance between hospitalizations and death rate is showing me that treatments are really not improving dramatically. Especially if you're looking at people being hospitalized and the death rate is almost, you know, correlated strongly with it. All right, here's our data. Uh, positive increase, the hospitalization increases, scatter plot. You're not seeing any linear relationship or correlation. All right, this is for me personally. Don't have to worry about that. This is for me to try to find patterns. Da da da, moving forward, forward. Hospitalization increase, the positive increase. There's your increases and there's your hospitalizations. What you're noticing here is basically less hospitalizations. Let's back this down just a little bit. There it is, all right. As we continue to pursue forward, hospitalization increase to death increase. Again, that is just one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in reference to COVID data-wise. No one else has caught on to it. I don't know why, but I've never seen such, a, such an incredible, incredible correlation all the way through. It didn't really have that impact in the beginning, as you can see, but the data started getting collected. And this is across the entire United States. So that to me is just befuddling. All right, now we are gonna to go to our Monte Carlo scenarios, Monte Carlo, and we are gonna run it. And our Monte Carlo, believe it or not, has been pretty much on target. Whoops, let's get the kernels running. Again, so we all can review the data together. First time. But boom. All right, Monte Carlo simulations are running. I think I made it some massive number of uh, uh, routines here. All right, here's basically the information I'm just using to mark my information. This is the deaths in the United States from August 12th, because that's where we're basing our Monte Carlo off of, from August 12th forward. But as you notice, the deaths are beginning to decrease pretty dramatically in the United States. All right, to proceed as follows, here is a engine, a function. All right, here we are. Uh, looks pretty linear in reference to case predictions, obviously, because they keep on accumulating. All right, this is the new cases per million. We're right about the middle there uh, in the simulations. Now we're projecting up to almost Christmas Eve. And gosh, I hope this ends by Christmas Eve. But we're noticing a, a small linear drop, which is really weird because we've been seeing a pretty solid increase. But this is Monte Carlo. It's an estimation based upon uh, past uh, you know, data. And here we are. I ran a little describe function here. So this is a new deaths per million prediction. It's still dropping. But here you can look at it right here. This is our standard deviation. Uh, this is a max deaths per million. We're looking at 3.1. Our minimum deaths per million by uh, Let's make this a little bigger for you. If by December 23rd or Christmas Eve, best case scenario according to Monte Carlo is 0.85 deaths per million. So here's our data as of October 17th, 2020, predicting on outward. All right, let's see what we have here. And that is it. I think we covered 
everything. All right, information, the links will be there online for you to follow through. Again, a little long. Anything I could do to help make it more interesting for you or any other data you want to analyze, just mention it. Uh, we'll extract the data any way we can just to basically, you know, we may discover something new. You may see something from an angle that I did not see. And again, I'm just a real amateur at this. But even then, the data that we're being presented um, is pretty interesting as far as basically our comparison to our performance to other countries. Um, and, you know, just whatever we can do to help. You know, whatever it comes down to. We've got to look at the other countries as controls. And, of course, now I'm just blabbering on. But, again, look at this. I'm more interested in lives being saved than trying to get likes or views on YouTube. And the information is out there, but for whatever reason, it's not trickling up to the right people. Again, Ralph signing off. Gratitude. Thank you. I look forward to seeing or talking to you all a little bit later on. See you all next time. Bye.